Hi everybody, we have a uh, 2013 Chrysler Town & Country. Uh, I've had this van a couple years, good van. We, ha we now have a issue with the sliding door on the passenger side actually, where when the door shuts and it tries to cinch shut, it, you get a loud hammering noise back there in the back side of the door, um, kind of like a the, the actuator trying to over cinch or trying to continuously catch and it's just not catching. Um, it's really loud and annoying and my wife is on me to fix this. Dealers want, I don't know anywhere, I've heard from six, seven, eight hundred, more, even more to, to fix this. So we're going to try to do this ourselves. I'll show you the parts I bought um, and how I'm going about this. Um, here is the driver's side door. I'll just show you what it's supposed to do. I have it turned on manual mode. So when the door shuts, it cinches shut. You kind of hear the motor kind of running in the back of the door and it, it closes pretty tight. My other door is not doing that. It, uh, you get a loud noise in the, in the back side of the door here where that motor is and where that lock actuator and latch assembly is. Well, that wasn't too bad, too loud, but usually it's really loud. And really more annoying than that. So, uh, nope, did not help. But the, it needs to be fixed. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna take the door panel out, get into the guts of the door. Um, and I'll show you kind of what I what I've gone through. There's also a, it's kind of dark in here, but there's a, a door striker there, or catch. Um, that's not my problem, but I originally thought it was. I'll show you what I mean. Looking online, there's several different part numbers, uh, different parts for these doors. Um, the cinch motor actuator, uh, the actual motor, I bought. Uh, I got all my parts on Mopar Parts Giant website, but there's so many different Chrysler parts websites you can take your pick um, they are specific to the right or left side so make sure you get the right one you need this is the right side part numbers um, there's my part number that's what I paid um, the, yeah there's a part number there anyway 60 bucks for the actuator the latch assembly is a big assembly um, and a lot of people say usually the dealerships will will replace the entire assembly that includes the latch assembly along with the motor so there's a different part number that that includes all of it together well that one costs something like f almost four hundred dollars however if you just buy the actuator it's about sixty bucks just by the latch assembly it was about hundred and seventy bucks so I don't know why you would buy the whole assembly together and pay more than that. Maybe it, maybe there's more to the story, probably, but that's just in my simple mind there. So it looks like the new latch assembly, you know, has the latch. This is what you'd see the back side of the door if you just look at the back of the door where it catches in the striker. Um, a lot of people also had issues with the lock actuator, which I believe is what this is. That's not my problem, but this does include it. It looks like. Um, I originally thought, why not just change the striker as well? My only reason there is because the striker's ten dollars, and it's right there where you can get to it. So I thought, why not, why not change it? You know, my old one had a lot of wear on it. See the shiny area. I thought maybe it was a shot in the dark, but it did not fix my problem. But but uh, it was cheap enough to try. Here's the part number four seven one. 7598AH. Again, didn't help me, but thought I'd show you that to kind of. I ruled that out because it was a cheap option, I thought. Um, to get the door panel off on the inside, you'll need some kind of pry tools. I just bought some cheap Harbor Freight trim tools, but you can use any kind of pry bar if you protect, uh, if you protect the end of it with some tape, some packing tape, or some black tape just so you don't scratch up your door plastic. 
I don't think there's really any specialty t tools required beyond some kind of prior tool to get the panel off. I think you'll need a 10 millimeter uh, ratchet. I mean, you could use a drill, but I like to just use hand tools. You probably need some Torx bits. Um, so I'll have a set of those. Other than that, that's about uh, all I'm doing here. Again, here's my part number for my latch assembly on the right side. 6803-0380 AE. All right, let's see how uh, bad this job is. All right, the first thing to do um, to get the door panel off, you have to remove this piece of trim. Here's this black thing in the back. It just uh, you should be able to just kind of pry it up and back, and it should come off. Um, next, this black kind of area around the door handle, it also just pops off. Should be able to just kind of pop that off of there. Um, and then there should be a, a screw somewhere behind that that you need to take out um, before you can kind of pop the door panel off. Um, let me get those off real quick. Okay, just like I thought, these panels popped right off. This one has a couple of spring clips. See this, the shiny, the metal, hard to see there, the metal uh, things down in there. They just they just kind of pop right on uh, there and there. So they're probably right off. This other uh, trim piece here, same thing. There's uh, these plastic kind of holes around the perimeter there. These uh, clips just kind of push into those holes so it pops right out. And then we're going to need to take this little torque screw out right here. That uh, helps hold the door panel on, I guess. Um, once we get that off, we should be able to uh, crack the door open a little and gently sort of pry around the the exterior, the I guess the outside edge of the panel, and get get that panel off of there. And I'll show you what that's like um, when I, once I get it off there. Okay, okay, I've got the uh, door open here on the back side. This is the door panel. Just had my little pry tool under there. It should, it should be able to just pop off with a little bit of pressure. Of course, I dropped it, but uh, it's hard to do with one hand. So, here we go. You can kind of see the snaps in there, two that just popped off there. So I'll just keep working that all the way up. Um, I've already done some on the front side. Same thing down in here. Should be able to just go all the way around. I do believe there's a couple in the middle of the door that you'll just have to be careful with as you pry on it and pull on it. Okay, I wanted to show you the door panel. It's popped off, but I thought I'd show you the snaps. Um, I was able to use a regular trim tool for most of it around the outside edge. There were a couple uh, snaps right in the center, center of the door. One about in here somewhere, and one back here. Um, you can reach your hand inside here and sort of feel this one and see it with a flashlight. But I was able to take a little bit longer of a pry bar just kind of go right under that pop that snap and pop it off so that I didn't break anything same back there I put this from the outside of the van uh, back there and uh, it's not too hard my van has power windows and a heated seat back here so I've got a couple wires to unplug right here but uh, otherwise the door you can see the the green snaps um, around there and the one in the center is right here which goes into this white thing there same thing back here you can reach your hand in from the door and feel the the other one I was talking about it just presses into this 
other than that uh, just a bunch of snaps on the top edge there's no snaps it's just um, really it's down in the the window seal really tight so it's a little bit of finagling to get that out of there but not too bad um, I don't think I broke anything so that's a good thing all right I'll take those wires off and get this panel out of the way and see where we go from here all right I've got the door panel off came right off again here's a little look at it get the snaps um, on the uh, the interior of the door there's this black kind of cover that goes over the guts of the door that has to come off and some people have had a pretty hard time it looks like online getting this off uh, it does look like there's I don't know nine or ten or so ten millimeter bolts around the perimeter here um, so those will have to come out um, there's some other things to, to note I guess you have this rod that runs from the door lock uh, back towards your goes into your door lock actuator that's mounted inside there on the latch so I think we'll have to disconnect that uh, from here in order to go forward also this door if you have power windows like me um, you'll have to disconnect the window so there's these little inspection windows I guess you could call them these rubber covers one there and a smaller one there so you can just fold them down and you can see then your window and how your window is bolted to the regulator assembly in there um, I took my power window switch off of the off the door frame it just kind of pops right out so I did plug that in here so I can roll this window up and down let me turn the, the car on it'll have an annoying dinging but you can uh, see your window go up and down so you have to get it to the right spot where you can get this this bolt out right right there same thing back here it's in a different position get the shadow out of the way here oops wrong way lower your window down there it is that way you can uh, d remove that um, I'll let you know if I figure out the best way, to, which order to, to put that in. And other than that, I think you just go around and get all these bolts out. Um, there is one in the front of the handle, so don't forget that one. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I've got most of the bolts removed from the perimeter of the door. Um, there are 10 of them. They all look to be the same length, it looks like to me. I've left one in for now, just so it doesn't fall out while I'm showing you this. I've got the, the window removed, the bolts here and in there. It's removed and I was able to just kind of raise up the window by hand, grabbing it and just raising it up from the outside and inside. Um, the window, there's nothing to hold it, you know, once you remove those bolts. Uh, so, just... Uh, I've stuck some wooden wooden wedges kind of down in there to hold the keep the window from sliding down. You can uh, you can stick your pry tools down in there. Anything that won't scratch the window, obviously. I've seen people use tape uh, to tape the window up or stick cardboard in there or whatever. Anyway, um, it wasn't too big of a deal. I've also the the rod, the door lock rod. Um, I've removed it from here it's really easy you just kind of once you get it to where you can see it it's pretty self-explanatory it just pops out of that little plastic groove in there comes off so it's now loose so when I remove this black thing the rod obviously is still connected to the lock actuator back there um, the cable here for the door handle the door open handle uh, just pull this in a couple of snaps just pop it out I don't yet know if I'll have to remove it from the handle. I'm hoping I can just remove this black piece as an as a one big piece and just kind of leave it half connected basically just long enough to get so I can get in there. You know, if you don't have to remove things then that's a plus. Um of course it doesn't look too hard to remove if if it does become a, a problem. Um I think I mentioned this earlier but there's no need to remove these 
four Torx bolts. Leave those in. That holds your window regulator. Um, not worth messing with that. There's no reason to do that. So just take the ten, the ten uh, bolts out here. Like I said, they're all the same length um, around the outside there. All right, I'll get that off and let you know if I run into any issues. Okay, a couple things I noticed that I'd let you know. It looks like it'll be easier to pull this black panel off if you go ahead and disconnect this harness down here. So I've done that. You just slide the red uh, lock the opposite way that it, you find it. And then it uh, push down right here and it should come right apart. And then the plug is kind of held onto the door with a couple of uh, just, you know, push in kind of snaps so you can pry off with the pry tool same with this so now that's loose looks like there's also a cable that kind of runs over this for now I'm gonna try to leave it attached but don't know how that'll work also I noticed there's a ground wire over here it goes kind of from this bundle of wires over here to the door frame so we need to take that off so that that ground wire is not holding us up um, other than that, I'm not sure what else needs to come off, but it doesn't look like too much else. All right. Okay, this black panel looks like it really can't come off until these cables on the forward side are out of the way or disconnected because they just don't have enough slack. Um, I looked online. It looks like you just the cables are held on held in little guides by these two plastic clips. You can uh, just reach through here, and you can you can feel them. You can feel the cables in there. Um, so we'll just you know remove those plastic clips. Also, one of the one of the cables goes into this forward. I don't know if it's the door catch. I'm not sure what you call this area, but it looks like there's just some Torx bolts. There's three of them. One, two, and there's one hidden behind the foam. Three. So take those three out. And then your cable is free, uh, freed up uh, to be able to, you know, give yourself some wiggle room. To pull this thing out of there. All right. Okay, I think I'm making some progress here. Um, those cables just took took the plastic snaps off that were in the holes. Um, I took the three bolts out of the front edge of the door. And that released um, this kind of latch assembly on the front end here. Now that this is actually inside of the door, you know, obviously. But the cable is attached to it, and it's just the easiest way to get this cable free, just to pull it out and just leave it kind of hang there. Um, looks like mostly the front side is really loose now. The back side uh, is the challenging side, I think. Um, there is a latch assembly back there. This is the new one I have, just to show you kind of what it, what it looks like. But it's back there in the uh, back part of the door, way back here. There's a, a vertical kind of black bar inside of there. That the, it's a window track, I think. The window goes up and down on. And that's, from what I gather, a pretty hard part of this job. Um, to get it loose, you you need to remove a couple of the bolts. Uh, back here, I'll, I'll show you. Um, well, you might be able to see from here. Let's see. I think that you need to remove this bolt here, and there's one above, right below the uh, where the hinge mounts here, right there. So take that out. Take that out for the vertical black, I guess, frame member inside there. And then on the back edge of the door, there are. Uh, three bolts I'll show you that you need to remove as well okay so yeah right here right here and right there um, once you get that off again this is what the thing looks like the new one right here you can see where the the two top bolts and the bottom bolt that's uh that's these three bolts there so 
and uh, this this will have a, the action the cinch motor will be mounted on this as well you know on the one that's inside the door so we'll get those three bolts out and we will get this bolt and this bolt out that will let this whole assembly kind of come out along with that black panel in there um, and I think it just takes a lot of wiggling to get it out and same thing to get it back in I think but all right okay I got those bolts out of the back and this piece did come out and it was a bit of a challenge I guess is one word to get it out um, all is one piece you just have to do a lot of tilting and finagling around and trying different ways to try to get it to come out of there you can reach up and feel it around but it's really just a matter of have some patience um, don't break anything um, this black bar is kind of the window track and I think that it is a challenge in another video I watched the guy called this the vertical bar of pain and suffering or something because <laughs> because the way it was just a challenge to get in and out um, I can see a little bit better now how it's made here's the new one here's the old one um, it mounts to this black thing which unfortunately looks like plastic so hopefully it doesn't break it looks like it already has one little spot that may be broken but uh, the bark you can rotate and uh, down there it'll rotate to where the lines in the slot and you can pop it off or it just comes off so I'll do that um, the cinch motor is pretty small um, there it is and I'll get this whole piece out as one piece and uh, see if I can see anything obviously wrong with it I'll take the motor off just for fun see if there's anything broken in there um, I'm trying to debate on whether I should um, change both the motor and the latch assembly or just the latch assembly but maybe I'll take it apart see if I see anything obviously wrong if not I'll probably replace them both because this is a challenge to get back in here again um, I did not remove this one cable that goes up to the, I think it goes to the exterior door handle. Uh, some videos were showing where you could, you could go up there where it attaches and disconnect. That would probably make things easier, but it is, it is kind of the one thing holding me from actually removing this from the door. So, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. I can get to it. I can get to what I need to get to. So. All right, I'll see if I can get this uh, unit off of the plastic frame. And uh, obviously I need to disconnect a couple wire plugs. And I'll see how it's put on there. And I'll, I'll show you once I get it off how it was connected. And once I have it on the workbench, see what it looks like. Well, the good news is I got the uh, latch assembly off and the motor removed. The motor was just held on by four torque screws. Um, a couple things, well, their new replacement latch I got, I don't think it's the right part number, um, which is a pain in the butt since today is a Sunday and I have no other way to get one. Um, the old one has, a, you know, one, one cable that comes into this plug, another cable goes into the lock actuator, you know, the top plug here has got... Um, six pins. The new one has one smaller connector on top with just four pins and it's made differently and it just goes straight to the lock actuator. So I don't think it'll work in my car. Uh, well, first of all, the plug is not even the right shape or, or size. It's a different size. So yeah, it's the wrong one. So be careful what you get. Um, the website I used said that the part I tried to order was superseded by the, by uh, this one. Of course, they were not right. So, I got that problem. So, anyway, I was looking at the old one to see if I could find anything wrong with it. Um, you can see the gear in here that the motor turns. It, it looks fine. I don't see any teeth damaged or anything. Um, everything looks like it should in here. There's a little small, little kind of micro switch 
that uh, like a cam presses on when the gear turns. I can hear it clicking on and off. It seems like it's coming on and off anyways. Um, so I do have a new a new motor. So there's a chance it could just be the motor uh, that needs to replace. Here's the old motor. Um, the, uh, the teeth on the drive look fine. I don't see anything obviously wrong with it, but honestly, I don't have much choice today being Sunday. I might try to, I'm just going to try to put the new motor on to the old lash assembly. And uh, I might as well just give it a shot, put it about partially back together enough to test it once and see if that works. If not, you know, I'm not really out much besides a little time, I guess, because I'm stuck in the water. All right. Well, I've got the uh, latch assembly with the new motor put back on this door panel here, this black part of the door panel. Um, I recommend taking off the this vertical black bar and just trying to fit it in there, and then, you know, without the door, just just so you can feel it and see how it kind of goes in there you'll have to put it together all to get all in one like this but it might help if you just take it off and kind of finagle it around inside the door here and uh, see where it kind of goes it goes up and um, goes around the window up in there right in there but uh, it is a little bit tricky to get it to go. I had to drop it in front of this part of the door here and then kind of rise, raise it up in the position by hand. We'll try, I'm sure it'll be a bear, but I'll get it in there uh, with all together now and see how it goes. All right, guys, I've been messing with the black bar of doom and pain for hours. Cannot get it in there. I just finally figured out something. As you can see, I've a little of the plastic snaps have kind of broken but this one's still there holding on you know all this black plastic stuff the bottom one I kind of broke it off but I've zip, zip tied it on there it should be fine for what it does but what I didn't know I just figured out was I assume this black bar goes went behind here and because it is that's how it works at the bottom but I just realized that and that's probably why I couldn't ever get the bolt hole to line up. It goes on like this, and it slides. A, there's a groove here, and it it uh, slides back and forth. So that should give me the room I need to get it get it on there. Um, you can see <laughs> all the messing around with the pick I was trying to do to get the bolt hole to line up. Couldn't quite do it. Um, anyway, I think I'm on the right track now. This though is is a bear. I mean, set your side, set yourself aside enough time to mess with this. Now I'm on uh, day two because I didn't give myself enough time with this yesterday. But uh, we'll see. I think I'm on the right track. All right, I finally got this thing back together, and uh, that that vertical black bar of pain is was the worst part. The thing was tough. Um, make sure you get the the black bar, you know, attached to the plastic piece correctly. I think that was half of my problem yesterday. Um, you just have to feed it in there, kind of at an angle. You'll you'll feel it back in there, and then it kind of goes around the window. Then you can pull it uh, around the window. Uh, it's shaped kind of like a U, like a channel. You can pop it against the window, and then reach down below and raise it up. Um, you have to reach behind the door panel up in there and just kind of grab it as best you can. I would highly recommend to take the bar off just to practice fitting the bar in there in the right place. But, you know, before you uh, try it with the whole panel together. So make once you understand it, take it out, make reattach it all, and then and then feed it up in there. You might have to have a second set of hands to hold the back side of the door. I managed to do it without that, but it probably would have helped. Um, once you get it up in there, start this top bolt in the window track first. 
uh, before any other ones back here. Um, once you get that one lined up, you can do the rest. Um, then I was able to do the uh, the other bolt right here, and then the, the three bolts in the back that come in from the back edge against the latch were kind of last. You can kind of pull that into place last. And then uh, that was the hard part for sure. But uh, don't give up. You have some patience. And then it's just a matter of putting this panel back on. Uh, all ten bolts around the outside. Um, put, feed the cable, you know, back in. If, if you remove the the little latch on the front side in, inside of here, I mean, it just sits down in there, and you just bolt it over the three bolts. And then the the cable, little cable holders, push them back in from the inside. One there, one back in here. But uh, it works. It actually works now, I think. So I just changed the cinch motor because the latch I got was the wrong one. Luckily, it actually works. So let's try it here. And I have fixed my problem, and I'm pretty excited. Uh, next, we're just uh, after you get, you know, all the bolts in, and kind of close these little rubber windows up. Just uh, put your door panel back on. Just you'll have to sit in the top. The top will have to go in first. Make sure you get the seal on. Make sure you get the seal on the bottom. Just re put the guide cables all back in their guides, and I think you're good to go. Here's my uh, old cinch motor. Just for fun, I took it apart to see if I could figure out if it really was bad or not. It's hard to tell without looking at a new one, but um, there's like a worm gear here that it it's rotates and spins your the big gear. Don't see any obvious problems, but you could definitely tell how a plastic gear like that could probably wear pretty easily. Um, so if this worm gear is worn, which it doesn't look super tight um, you know you could see how it would slip gears and ca cause that hammering noise so that could be what it was doing all right all right I've got the door all back together panel is on all the snaps are gone trims on it's all good everything works door shuts pretty excited what I thought was kind of a I'm painting the butt because my latch was the wrong part number actually worked out because all along it was just my cinch motor um, cinch motor was only about 60 bucks plus shipping so I can now return that latch that was 170 bucks so that's pretty uh, pretty pretty cool um, this job I think a lot of stuff it's a lengthy job but it's not that hard so I would uh, I would say it's not it's not the end of the world to do this job so just don't don't be afraid to do it but give yourself enough time that one part you know getting fitting that that black bar uh up in there really took me a lot of time but uh just trial and error and patience and i think that you can get it um get you know have enough coffee and or beer and uh, i think that you'll be in good shape all right hope this help you guys